Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we're back to another live stream of Shadowverse. Today is Monday, July 12th. Uh, if you didn't see the previous Friday live stream, you're not alone. That live stream happened and then immediately was blocked by Rooster Teeth for the trailer of for a copyright claim of a ridiculous copyright claim of the trailer of their new game or wby um although in all fairness i don't know if they own the copyright to the trailer which once again gets into the weirdness of copywriting things and the stupidity in the thought that ad copy and advertisements could be copyrighted in the first place why would you copyright something you would like as many people to, to see as possible? Last I had heard the Apple ad, the Apple, the Apple Super Bowl ad that was played once uh, during the Super Bowl uh, at Apple's request and then re-shown for decades hence for free as an example of a great ad. ad. Uh, pretty much, I thought that had proven that uh, commercials weren't copyrightable, uh, but who knows. There certainly was, at one point, a very clear decision in the legalities of it that uh, ad copy and advertisements were not copyrightable. Regardless, stupid, and it got blocked, and I wasn't... <laughs> And I, and I will say again, the Ruby game does not look particularly good. Um, it's being made by WayForward. Um, so, if anything, it, the game trailer should be claimed by WayForward, not Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth, uh, without getting into it too much, since it's not usually about video games and it's more about a stupid anime wannabe show of Ru ruby and some other stuff uh has a lot of kind of nonsense around it and kind of a shockingly large number of things that are owned by the same company as rooster teeth and uh, and you wouldn't realize that they actually are that uh, that they are connected or owned by the same corporation. More and more these days, you, you don't have companies like Sony that come out and admit that they are these large corporations. You have more trickery. Um, Lionsgate is kind of a great example about that when they created nearly seven years ago the... the Geek and Sundry channel and the Nerdist channels, uh, they made those, they advertised those heavily as being independently run by celebrities, uh, ventures, and maybe to some extent it, it felt like that to even the celebrities, but in practicality it was really Lionsgate in the background. Same is even true for the new G4, so... That is an example, I think, of not wanting, you, you don't want to get oversold on G4 and think that it is this reboot in this indie independent movement run by the actor who pretends to be the guy in charge of G4. It clearly is a corporate venture, although arguably I would say so far the B4 G4 content doesn't feel like it's been thought through very well um but yeah so that entire stream got blocked what that also highlights is that my anti dmca claim abuse uh, uh effort did not work so i've upgraded that to now kind of move and jitter the image by two pixels it probably has worked though because it has been um it has been certainly 
at least a year and a half since I've had any kind of copyright claim that I've taken any notice of. There have probably been some content ID claims that have taken advertisements uh, uh, and put ads on my channel and taken money away uh, from me. Although, technically, it wouldn't even be taking money away from me. It'd be just making money and showing ads on my channel when when I'm not making any money on it. Um, which, yeah. Uh, I kind of wish there was an option on YouTube to say, I don't want any ads run on this. I would rather this, sh this straight up not be shown if somebody tries to run ads on my uh, channel through Content ID. Um, because I think that would help, by a small amount, disincentivize people from just making as many Content ID claims as possible and automating the process. And frankly, it's ridiculous that YouTube has not completely cracked down on these automated processes. Although, it still seems like you just can't... Even if you're going to let Warner Brothers or Disney or the big companies automate the process, they're the bad actors at way more than small independent people. Like, I've seen one or two mistaken content ID claims from some weird YouTube channel that like some random weird YouTube channel that that uh, thinks they own like Hearthstone or something uh, once or twice but consistently Warner Brothers claiming Lego Batman video and music in, from the Lego Batman video game happens all the time for me Or it did, or it has happened in the past. Let's see, I guess we're going for Runecraft and Bloodcraft with one Dragoncraft today. Hmm. So yeah, yeah, these Runecraft and Bloodcraft decks not particularly great. That I struggled with them on Friday. I'll probably struggle with them somewhat today. Um, what else did I do over the weekend? Well, I finished Hellblade as soon as, uh, soon as Sacrifice. Hated it as a game. Very disappointed that, that I spent extra money on that game because it was hyped up as a critical darling. And it really just brings up a lot of reaction in, in me that if that is what mainstream video game journalism, and particularly Giant Bomb, thought was a good game, it really just highlights how much of a fool I've been in the past following them and not vetting my sources um, enough, clearly, because there is barely any video game in Hellblade. It's not good. The writing's not good. The visuals are good. That's it. Even at the aspect of saying the visuals are good, really you're just talking about the 3D model of Suna is good because the background visuals and the visuals of the other characters aren't really good. Uh, there's nothing really special with the audio, um, even though they have this whole idea of 3D surround audio and, peop and uh, people speaking and... and Suna hearing voices. Um, You've been that 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 doesn't really do anything for the game. My blade is autumn. I am the fallen leaf. A like a fallen leaf. And yeah, like I said, it just brings up the the thought certainly that. Um, that there is just this stupid l lack of desire amongst video game journalists who can't or don't want to play video games that they would praise a game like Hellblade and not come back and say yeah this actually sucks that um, 
because yeah it really does it's it is bad uh anyways i moved on to dead space 3 and shockingly what i'm playing now so far is not anywhere as bad as what people have um have decried it for now in fairness i'm only about a third of the way through dead space 3 and maybe they did patch it and add a lot more resource uh resources but it just doesn't feel that bad um, Scatter like the block. um there are definitely some failings and backslides that are happening with dead space 3. they definitely are trying at some point going i'm fairly certain they're going to try and make it more of an action game and less of a horror game uh i think uh the dead space series has always been ea's attempts to move into games as services and microtransactions uh even dead space one had a lot of like collector's edition suits and and things you could only get if you got the xbox or playstation exclusivity uh things they just converted that terrible concept into dlc where you could buy everything but you'd be spending 70 dollars extra to buy everything for dead space League. like the scavenger bots i'm in chapter five the scavenger bots haven't even been introduced as a concept so i'm wondering if maybe they were patched out uh there is definitely co-op sections that you just can't do in solo so i i am probably going to miss out on some of the uh contents there um and it definitely has this uh, system in which you can craft your guns but there's really no reason to craft your guns like so far i can only hold two guns and i've only used one gun i've just used the default gun and the upgrade system is totally a backslide um and way easier to do for that gun um all right well that's one so let's stick with that I suppose since that one so yeah the the upgrade system as far as the guns is a backslide because you only have like four circuit slots and unless they introduce a way in which you upgrade the circuits to make them do more it seems like at best you're going to get a circuit that increases your gun by two statistics um so for your like basic gun you'll have four open four like upgrade slots and in each of those upgrade slots you can put a circuit that is probably only going to be a plus one damage and a plus one clip and at the end of the day that's going to do plus four damage which may be a lot maybe not and let you have eight more bullets in your clip um which isn't terrible like because then the more bullets in your clip the less often you're reloading because the reload speed is going to be fairly low generally i don't think you ever really want to reload over just having a larger clip size hmm. it looks like I'm up. Um, but as far as the actual story in dead space 3 in the single player mode when you where you're not really seeing your co-op partner at all he showed up in like one cutscene, and that that's it 
he seems to show up in cutscenes where, where they actually talk to each other, but there seems to be a lot of cutscenes where that doesn't happen. Um, it's... Yeah, it seems to me like it, it is mostly just going through the events of the first game all over again. So, definitely with there being talk now of a reboot of Dead Space, the things you would want to see to inspire confidence from EA, which I don't know how much confidence you can really put into EA, it, it's, I think silly to believe that they're just going to turn over a new leaf without there being some more reason for that uh something more than than just a desire to make um make more profit um but it, if they came out and said, we're going to only have that one weapon, that would be interesting, the, the first starting weapon. I don't think they would do that. Um, there's enough people out there that they like the other weapons, the four, four or five basic weapons that were in the first game. So I think you pretty much have to have those weapons. I don't think you need to be able to modify those weapons in almost a Borderlands-esque way. Clearly, the uh, modification abilities of the weapons are unnecessary. Uh, I will say in in uh, Dead Space 3, tungsten is basically your premium currency, your diamonds. So, hold on to tungsten until you can make a tungsten brace bar, I think it's called. It's one of, like... 10 craftable items and you're going to want to have one of those extra on you at all time or one on you at all times because that's the only way to get into rooms and when you get into a room you're almost certainly going to get a decent number of tungsten amount of tungsten back uh, and certainly you're going to want to get all the other items in there and also say just keep um, health on you and keep um, um, keep bullets on you the bullets in Dead Space 4 seem to all be universal bullets um, so that has changed from the first game but yeah, if they just stuck to four guns, and that's four or five guns, and that's it, and maybe they introduce one new gun that is a new concept, and that really shows where Dead Space 3 really is was lazy, is that it didn't really introduce a new weapon, at least it doesn't seem like it's introducing a new weapon. You're set in an environment where you're going to ships that are hundreds of years in the past, and... A, it's weird that the technology still works, but B, that pretty much paints you into this corner where you're not going to find any new technology. or And so then it is just a case of maybe Isaac will invent some new suit or invent some new weapon, but I doubt it. He's not that much of an inventor. He's just an engineer repairman. Who also is pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah, that that's it. They you go through from ship to ship, so it wouldn't have hurt to uh, it, it wouldn't have hurt to have a scenario where you are. Now. Take only what 
what is necessary. W yeah, it wouldn't hurt to. Sorry, yawning there. Um, I started late today, but not as late as as Friday. Friday was really, really late. I started at like eight or nine in, in the evening, uh, and went to like one in the morning. Um, yeah, you could have had a scenario though where you went to one ship that was like a brand new experimental ship with new technology. You could have gone to one ship that was in modern time, one ship that was in past times. That would have given you the ability to change up the visuals slightly. But instead what I think it's going to do is have you on the same dark spaceship horror sections for half the game and then half the game you're going to be on a white snowy planet which isn't going to make any sense as far as a horror game hmm. an opportunity for growth let's see One more. I'll engulf everything in flames. Mm. But yeah, one thing I will say as I before we move on, which we need to move on, uh, and because this isn't going to be a particularly long stream today, um, I think, um, is. Dead Space 3 still feels very much like a uh, Dead Space game, an action game, whereas sorry, I keep yawning. Yeah, where whereas Suna was just a frustration, frustrating very fancy like walking simulator game at, at the very least with with dead space 3 i can just run and shoot zombies it does the the engine that dead space is in that would be another thing that would catch my attention is if they said dead space the dead space reboot was going to use the unreal engine instead of ea's own internal engines um, but yeah, the entire trilogy of the Dead Space game is very frame rate dependent and buggy and, and just turning down the anti-aliasing made the game, made Isaac as a character run a lot smoother. I'm still not sure that there aren't some little bugs here and there. Sometimes I hear rattling sounds that I don't know if that's supposed to be the game being scary or if that's just some item somewhere rattling against a surface because of the frame rate and the higher resolutions. Uh, I definitely have seen cups and things on the shelves that that just kind of appear and then drop down onto their platforms and they, they all have physics but there's clearly a bug between something having physics and um, and it being um, being flat on the surface to start with. Alright, so let's cover the news. Uh, according to YouTube creators, two-thirds of a channel's views come from outside the creator's home country. Which, okay. I think that severely is dependent on like your channel though in your home country because I would severely question that like my channel two-thirds of my uh, views are not coming out of outside of the United States or North America um, but I do definitely have a lot of views that come all over the place um, 
and that's definitely appreciated. I'm not trying to be United States centric by any means. Uh, but yeah, it, it is probably way more the case if you were a YouTube content creator, for instance, in like Portugal then yeah a significant amount of your videos would be outside of it um let's see telltale games put out a tweet on their twitter this is the new company that owns telltale games saying july 2004 telltale games was formed making great native experiences want to thank our original teams for their amazing stories as we hope to continue doing justice uh, going forward as the new Telltale which I feel like this is just an anniversary post but it might also be indicating a new naming scheme they're gonna get away from the games also it seems like they're doing a very ugly logo here as far as what the uh, what they're going to stylize their name as. And then it, they continue. If you want to learn more about the new Telltales moving forward, check out the story from Game Daily. Uh, Telltale 2.0, we cannot right the wrongs of the formal, former company. Which, in all fairness, I wasn't really expecting that they would even try to do that. But um, that is kind of the catch-22 you put yourself in when you create a when you buy an old company you want that naming and that branding and this is one of those weird scenarios where they actually didn't want the the name telltale as much as they wanted the games um, that telltale had and they 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 wanted the general profit that those games get by still being sold um, inherently, the, there is issues that need to be addressed as far as um, is the new Telltale game going to actually be a company that's working on games? Um, is the um, can they get the Wolf Among Us 2 out? What are their plans after the Wolf Among Us 2? Um, can they write a fairly deeply and quickly sinking ship that Telltale was? Um, they, the, the thing there is they, they need to expand and have some narrative style games that have been slightly improved but then they also need to say you know, our new telltale is willing to make a different kind of game uh, a more traditional game more than likely is, is what they should make like that there is definitely a way you could have taken the Walking Dead Telltale series and turned it into just a standard zombie, uh, if not first person shooter, zombie strategy game. Um, at least do some cross branding or licensing there. Hmm. And certainly the older games need to be readdressed. The uh, Poker Night at the Inventory and the um, Sam and Max games those concepts need to need to, to, to come out in some way and those don't have to be point and click adventure games or telltale style games it could be something totally new and frankly they could come out with almost any licensed product and as long as it has that CGI style visuals to it it would still feel like a telltale game 
maybe they don't want to keep that CGI style visuals and that's uh, that's going to be another hurdle they would have to get over Blessings certainly like if they came out with a telltale game that looked like Hellblade for instance that'd be very Damage weird um, but it might be better for what the new Telltale company wants to be. Hmm. Anyways, moving on from baseless speculation, here we have a game on Steam called Pocket Mina. Remember, Friday, I on Fridays I don't cover games, so we have a decent amount of games. To look at today. This is English and Thai for $2.99, just looks like a regular RPG game. Psychonauts 2 is going to have an invincibility toggle that aims to ensure difficulty doesn't get in the way of play. Having recently played Psychonauts 1, uh, not super surprising that they would do this because Psychonauts 1 clearly wanted to just tell a story and didn't really want to be a video game. Um, I feel like you run into that scenario too often where you have these things that are video games that shouldn't be video games. Um, I was listening to a, a YouTuber talk about how Deadly Premonition 2 is kind of a great example of that where that that is a video game that would have been way better if it wasn't a video game. Um, and Hellblade is another great example of that where like this is certainly the danger where we potentially will see the video game industry get up its own butt, for lack of a better term, so much about how inter interactivity doesn't matter and accessibility and letting everybody play and beat a game is so important uh, that we will see entire possibly the large majority of the video game industry turn itself from being an interactive medium into just being Hollywood 2.0 and shoving uh, content down people's throats uh, or shoving video uh, and animations down people's throats. It, like a back, almost a backdoor way to bring about an animation industry in the United States whereas the animation industry has been fairly limited to just Pixar and Disney up until this point. Um, but if you think about it for just half a second, almost everybody has at one time complained, uh, every video, every movie critic and TV critic has complained about how um, there is a TV show or movie that is just shoving narrative down your throat or shoving opinions down your throat. Um, if you're more conservative, it, it's the liberal TV uh, media that does that. If you're more liberal, it's the Fox News um, or the um, God's Not Dead um, style movies that does that. Uh, there's just propaganda on both sides uh, there so I don't know why well once again I guess as a video game industry getting up its own butt that they think they can pull that off and, it, and I will say that that is is kind of a consistent issue is that preachy SJW people uh, do seem to have this this complete blind spot to the fact that 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 being preachy and trying to shove concepts and propaganda down people's throat doesn't doesn't always work. Um, who knows what the what the video game industry is going to look like if they continued deeply down that path where it was just less and less interactivity and more and more cutscenes and it is going to just potentially turn every game into like a Kojima game where and 
yeah, I guess Kojima games, Metal Gear Solid style games, uh, are exactly what you're going to get uh, at a certain point. And you know, I don't think people are going to appreciate that. that all to me. Hmm. Uh, moving on, though, we have a game on Steam here called Red Crucible Eagle Archer, which makes it seem like there might be several Red Crucible games. This looks like some kind of tabletop game, but it also doesn't look like it's particularly interesting. Let's see, free to play, with in app purchases, single player, and online PvP. Yeah, that doesn't catch my interest. Let's see, why are we here? Um, you must make the first move. Scatter like the block. Kill this. Where the dice fall depends on you. Uh, video Games Chronicle has an article, Hideo Kojima, we were just kind of talking about him, doesn't like the director's cut title for Death Stranding. Um, it seems crazy that he wouldn't like it considering Kojima Productions is, is his company making it. Um, I th think the um, I think the takeaway from here is he's saying director's cut in his mind means it was shortened um, and he's saying nothing was shortened it, things are added um, which is a misunderstanding of what director's cut means uh, very rarely is the director's cut a shortened uh, version of what the theatrical cut compared to a theatrical cut. It, something is cut, in fairness, which would be the unedited version of the video, like with all the footage. There is no escape from the apocalypse to come. Hmm. Okay. The gods will know. Well, this ain't ideal, is it? See you around, Slick. Interesting. We'll see what happens. Um. Yeah. It would be very weird, though, to have like a complete unedited cut of a movie it would be even weirder to have a completely unedited cut of a video game um there isn't a lot of figurative code or content that is left on the cutting room floor in a video game uh but certainly there would have been voice acting lines that would have been picked over other uh, voice acting instances so a little Once bit again, could have been cut there, well have fun. Uh, but red? What's a strange reading? yeah, we are not certainly in the age in which storage is a real problem. So it's it's not, I think, a case that there was more game level data or 3D models or anything like that that was ready to go but just didn't fit on the blu-ray disc it would be so easy for death stranding to have just been on two discs of blu-ray if that was the issue or like one disc and one one blu-ray and one blue um dvd disc even so yeah
there's a couple other things you could have certainly named it. You could have called it Death Stranding Plus, Death Stranding Version 1.1. Um, you, you could certainly go in different directions like that. But Director's Cut, I think, is as good of a name as anything. And it certainly continues down the path of, of Kojima, in particular, wanting to really be a producer and, and movie director and not really wanting to be a video game director. Uh, which is why his games obviously have so many cutscenes. Moving on, Gometsu says Super Robot Wars 30 launches October 28th in Japan and Asia. Hmm. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel Saikyo Sy Battle Royale demo is now available in Japan. So Yu-Gi-Oh! is still happening. Uh, let's see. Kimatsu has this week's Japanese game releases, which they just now are getting Control Ultimate Edition. And let's see if there's anything else really worth mentioning. The Cram Shinchan game came out for the Switch. Um, mo that Monster Yokai game. I think, no, I think actually that's not the Monster Yokai game. I think this is a dungeon crawling game came out. Yeah, not a lot came out digi physically. Decent number of things coming out digitally. So, yeah. I don't know if there's really any news there, though. So. Honestly, this is the kind of article, had I looked at it, I probably would have just closed and not mentioned. Um, here, a game called Abba Rainbow, Tengu, and Zombie Nation announced for Switch and PC. Let's see if we have a trailer to look at. Yep. The only thing I could think is... is I pretty much watched all of the trailer... Um, on the Ruby that got the content that content blocked the entire three hour stream blocked for what was at most a two minute trailer whereas I've jumped I jump around on a lot of trailers so I'll have to be uh, a little bit more careful I fairly often do just jump around a lot fast a lot more um on these trailers just to save time they said there was going to be a full metal alchemist announcement and there was not really a thought that there'd be a video game related to it but apparently a full metal alchemist mobile game is announced for ios and android i don't know what you really make th for that though it it is more than likely if I was going to guess going to be some kind of gotcha game or just an RPG game I don't know what else you could really do with it it could be a fighting game but for mobile that doesn't really make a lot of sense hmm. Hmm. it's coming from Square Enix hmm. More information will be announced in winter, they say. I wouldn't be surprised if this game actually gets cancelled before it even makes it to... Um, makes it to release. That with the idea of alchemy, you certainly could have a resource game where you're trying to get a lot of resources and trying to convert those resources into other resources but honestly that's not really what full metal alchemist was about it was a fighting show an action show more than anything else 
with some mystery around it, but you can't really put much mystery around a full metal alchemist game these days unless it's just going to be set in a completely different section of the world or a completely different time and you're, you're not even going to see like any of the philosopher's stone or the um the bad guys from the two different versions of the show or the good guys from the two shows um I want to play a card, but if I play a card, then I'd have to get rid of cards. Here we have Demon Slayer Kamitsu no Yobai, the Hinokami Chronicles. Um, which, yeah, I've also been able to show these videos about them being content I need ever. Like, it may be now more noticeable that the screen is kind of going a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and a little bit up. So feedback on that. If it's noticeable, apologies. I may not actually be able to undo it, but um, here you have the little sister character, I think in the anime who gets turned into a demon and is tr struggling to stay human and it's a fighting game um, here is the what I assume is the main protagonist the character and some other characters that I don't really know um, So yeah, this is now available for wishlist and follow listing, $69. It's going to have a third party EULA and a Nouveau in it. The problem certainly, I would say nowadays, is you kind of have to compare any of these anime fighters with Dragon Ball Z fighters as what I suspect is the best fighting game. So far based on an anime series and the Dragon Balls the Dragon Ball universe has a lot of characters a lot of people recognize and know um, and I don't think any of the Naruto games are going to supplement that or Jump Force is going to supplement that in the West at least so unless we've really hit a point now where the average person who is watching anime today knows more about uh, what is airing relatively recently and has forgotten about Dragon Ball which hasn't which is kind of old school probably 10 20 years old um, if Dragon Ball somehow has finally stopped being relevant then then we potentially would have an argument to playing some of these other anime fighting games unless they turn out to be really good. Of course, the history of anime fighting games tends to be that they aren't very good and that they are just cheap cash grabs. Um, it would make a lot more sense if something like Jump, Jump Force had succeeded and then there was just DLC for new anime characters but even but that didn't happen and I think you kind of want the story and that is kind of the problem is that you more than likely do want the story more than you want just random ability to fight with people Let's see, moving on. Um, EA's dual entitlement tweaks means fewer free next-gen upgrades for FIFA 22. I'll leave this Gamma Sutra article for you to read if you're interested. Um, 
exact same article twice in a row. Here we have a game on Steam called Tower Arena. We already talked about that game. Uh, here we have a game called Blade Skylands. We already talked about that. I went back too far, obviously. Here we have one called Panic Mode. That... Um, Not sure that there's a game here. Let's see. Yeah. I don't think there's really a game here. Fires happen and people need to escape. And you're supposed to build safety equipment to alert these limbing like creatures to escape. $5.09 cents English only. I don't like the visuals on this well enough that I'd want to want to play this. Here we have a game called Twig and Flipper, which I think we had already talked about. Looks like a garbage game. A dollar nineteen cents English, allegedly full audio. It's a 2D platformer with the ability to run or fly. Uh, Next, we have a game called Neo Commanders. Now, of course, a lot of these games that we'd already talked about may be new because nobody saw the Friday stream. And I have disputed the content ID claim, that copyright claim, but they'll probably just sit on it for 30 days and then it will get dismissed automatically. Regardless, for a three times a week news, sh news uh, series, even being delayed one day Complete puts it out of order even well in this case over the weekend puts it out of order so the odds of somebody going back and watching that live stream are fairly low Uh, this game, Neo Commanders, yeah, it's just a top-down space game of no interest. $3.24. Here we have a game called Spiral to Despair. I think we had already talked about this one, too. I put it on the following list because I kind of like the art style. Um, barely deserves to be on the follow list. Here we have Brick Breaker Heart Collector. Man, this is an art... Arknoid clone for $3.99 English and Spanish. No interest in there. Here we have an infinite driver or infinite runner game called Infinite Valley. $1.39 in a bunch of languages. Here we have one called To Be With You. Jeez, why are so many of these tabs open? This is a visual novel that I put on the fall list. $2.99 English only. Complete Here we have one gold. Tabari 2 Nightmare. I think there, this one we skipped because Tabari as a series didn't ever catch anybody's interest. Six stars and 29 cents English and Japanese. And the game itself doesn't look that interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly questioning, did I accidentally open a bunch of tabs I'd already talked about on Friday, or did some kind of weird glitch happen? Let's see. I'll open the way. You fall behind. Hmm. Let's see, next we have a game called Natural Habitat, and this looks new. Looks like it's a match three game with some characters that you power up through the match three concept. 
but then it also seems to have some other gameplay mechanics which just makes it feel like it's kind of all over the place as a concept early access 12.99 six single player yeah i think they're just trying to do far too much as an idea and the visual polish would have to be about two or three times as good as this to make me really interested in that here we have mtb dirt which looks like a bicycle game looks like maybe it only has a few locations or one location there might be a game here or it might just control terribly 14.99 english only i'll give it a follow and see what people have to say here we have a game called the kind camille chamomile looks like it's some kind of kid friendly game like exploration game with random acts of kindness six dollars and 99 cents bunch of languages i'll give it a follow always trying to find a kid friendly game um there may be something here it's also very possible that there is absolutely nothing there We end this here. Like the moon on the water I still die. Interesting. Alright, the next game I have on Steam is called Idle Tentacles, and it's uh, as the name would suggest. Um interesting. Network issues. Uh I have been working on my network somewhat um windows 7 backup which is still something you can use in windows 10 on a samba share on my ddwrt um, firmware on on the router just doesn't work the the problem is completely obviously that there's just not enough ram in home routers and I would, I would like to see with forget. a next generation of routers to either use ARM version 8, uh, whether that's version 8.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which are all available right now, um, or better yet, using a Raspberry Pi for compute module. Um, if they integrated high-end routers to use the Raspberry Pi for compute modules. A, you're not play, paying an ARM license that should save the creators of the uh, routers, people like Linksys, a lot of money. Um, but it would also mean that you would get at the base at least one gigabit of RAM, I think is the minimum you can get. Although you could get custom chips, I suppose, with with less RAM. But you, you need more RAM if you're going to have a network attached storage. You kind of don't need more RAM if you're just going to have a router. And that, that is the problem. Is Unless there is a generation of high-end routers that have expandable RAM slots, um, like a SODIMM or something, uh, you're going to constantly run into that problem. And so it creates this market where you're potentially paying a hundred to maybe even two or three hundred dollars for a router that can't do what a nas can do even though it should be able to do what a nas can do which is the situation we're in right now and then on top of that you're paying two or three hundred dollars for a nas that can barely do what two hundred and three hundred dollars worth of um uh, computer po components could do But yeah, regardless, it doesn't work. Um, Samba crashes. It runs out of RAM. I was able to get one backup to work uh, through, I think, nothing but sheer luck. 
by telling it, it to to get rid of the ram as soon as possible uh, just every minute saying uh, synchronize the ram which is a command called sync s-y-n-c and then purge the cache pages and I got it to work once and I never got it to work again and frankly at a certain point it it stopped being fun trying to get it to work and then I started to do some more research and to figure out is this even really the way forward? Uh, should I be trying to use Samba to share a network folder to then back up? Or has networking just completely been abandoned by Windows so badly that it, it's just not the right solution? And honestly, I don't think it is the right solution. So there is a protocol called Secure Copy Protocol, SCP. It's part of the SSH uh, connection form. And there is a program called WinSCP that can be automated. And that seems like that is working better to just back up files that way using scp instead of samba before i got to scp i tried to use ftp ftp probably would have worked but ftps with security uh encryption probably wouldn't have worked uh, again that that the software is just not installed it just all takes up too much space uh, and sftp also would have been too much of a hassle and you're basically doing the same thing when to set up sftp as you are to set up scp and it's easier just to set up scp because um, that's pretty much already built in and set up and so that's a lot of letters to say i've been doing networking stuff trying to to get my windows to back up uh, at the end of the day, I think what I'm going to end up doing is having the Windows 7 backup back up to a local hard drive and then automate WinSCP to back up that backup uh, using uh, to the router's hard drive. So it is a at a different point of the site, sort of off-site backup. Um, Um, the one thing you would want to do for posterity when setting up uh, the SSH connection in, in SCP is on the router there really is only one login that you can use for SSH you could try to make other users and things like that but it, it's, it, it would be more of a hassle than what it is worth I think so instead of making other users and then having to go through it the way you would properly do it on a on a Linux uh, a, a fully built Linux setup instead of just the minimal Linux setup that you have on a router um, what you can do is you can establish a command to automatically run based on the computer's uh, key file uh, to get into SSH and since I only let SSH logins happen based on key files uh, and not passwords then I can have a command run that runs a script that ch roots the that specific computer changing the root directory which can then limit severely where what files can be accessed for the backup software and what commands can be executed for the backup software um, so that's what I think I'll probably do for some posterity sake but I, I have other projects also I'm focusing on I've been 
somewhat hesitant on on working on this project where I was going to build a box to insulate my outdoor faucet pipes and then put a manifold, a kind of custom made manifold for a sprinkler system on that. I've been hesitant. There's very much one specific cut that has to be made and if you if I totally screw up the measurements and that one cut then um, then uh, it's gonna come out pretty poorly so I, I busted out my calipers and made some measurements and and I've been hesitant on that but I, I can't be super hesitant and I need to to just say that now is the time to uh, now now is the time to move move forward on that method and and try and finish it plus it's also in the middle of the summer so if i can't get the if i can't get the, the dumb sprinkler system set up and running by the end of the summer then it's gonna feel like a bit of a waste so there's a bit of a ticking clock on that. Oh, I guess I should have pushed this first. Yep. Uh, I somehow managed to get back to the accountability section there when I'm talking about what I was doing instead of actually playing video games. Um, anyways, I was supposed to be talking about this adult game, Idle Tentacles. It looks like nothing, honestly. I, I can show it. Like, there's there's just nothing here. It seems like it's an idle clicker game from China. Um, you've got one girl in a bunny suit, one girl in kind of a scantily clad loot outfit. And that seems to be about it. It's 89 cents, Chinese only. Yep. Here we have a game called Rhythmetallic, which looks like a rhythm game that works only on keyboard, which doesn't interest me. $9.99. Rhythm games wouldn't interest me much anyways. Here we have a game called Dot Debugger, which looks like nothing of interest for free. English only, 12 levels in total. Here we have a Chinese character game that looks like some kind of cell phone port done very poorly japanese free to play single and online co-op not chinese i was wrong here we ga have a game called a switch for fran which looks like a joke game yeah let's see 99 cents english allegedly full audio yeah i don't see anything there of interest Let's go over here and start a game and just kind of ignore a game. Here we have a game called Zombie Spectre. We're no longer, I think, getting treasure chests in Shadowverse. So now there's even less of a reason to really struggle and try and get victories. Um, the daily quest will give you gold and certainly that's good. But honestly, it's not worth getting all the daily quests done every day. Uh, this game, Zombie now, Spectre, looks like nothing Roll of interest. $8.99 English, allegedly full audio. Here we have a game called Monster Evo, which clearly is a mobile phone port. A lot of these Steam mobile phone ports are going to just disappear, I, I'd assume, with Windows 11. And the idea of being able to just put Android games directly on your um, on your um computer unless there's something very specific about the way windows 11 and the amazon app store puts apps on your computer compared to the way steam does it uh it won't disappear but overnight we'll we'll always see some low effort scammers putting mobile games on steam steam will still be the biggest platform by any means here we have a game on Steam called Subject 95, which looks just like an asset flip parkour 
platforming game. This is English full audio at $2.99. Here we have VR Combat Deluxe, which looks to have terrible frame rate, and the graphics don't look that good. $1.79 single player requires VR. We got a free disconnect there, which that's great. Which means if I can just get one more free disconnect, we could get all the, the daily quests done potentially today. Here we have a game on Steam called Sonata, Sonata Theory, I guess. 2D, 3D game with some musical elements. Hand drawn. I don't know if there really is a game here worth playing or not. It's free to play, so I guess the price is right. English full audio. Um, I guess you put a game like this on the follow list. The There's... Yeah. I guess you're looking for a fight. Might be something there. Here we have modern assault tanks. Which looks like just a tanks game. Free to play with in-app purchases, online PvP only. Again, probably a mobile game. Here we have a game called Elevated, where it seems like it's a top-down beat-em-up game with elevators 599 English full audio no interest yep pretty much gonna say that for every game I think today uh, that has been consistently the issue certainly is that there just have not been a lot of good games um, in the summer coming out and I don't expect there really to be Here we have a game called remnants Your only precious moments before time collapses onto itself to save your family warp and jump and rewind through space And pray that whatever lives between it doesn't notice you So this looks to me like it's some weird looking kind of horror game that doesn't inherently mean it's bad. Free to play English full audio. I guess once again you just put that on the fall list and see. Here we have 50 Waves Hero, which looks kind of like a Zelda game. Hmm, although, if you really are going to defeat 50 Waves, it may be much more of a top top down hack and slash game. Hmm. There very well may not be enough gameplay here. Five dollars and ninety nine cents English only. Give it a chance. It does look at least slightly intriguing. Here we have a game on Steam called Survivor, which doesn't look like anything. Just looks like an asset flip. First person shooter, free to play, English only. Here we have I Am A Story of Awakenings, which they're calling a first person shooter. Hmm. This feels weird. There's a lot of different environments that makes it feel asset flippy. Although it does seem almost like it's trying to have more gimmicks happening. A lot of this feels like a gravity gun from Halo. I mean, Half-Life. Hmm. Not seeing any enemies. $14.99. Probably doesn't deserve a follow list, but I'll give it one anyways. Here we have Twin Storms The Journey of Buka. Which looks like it's an action fantasy game. It's visually polished enough to make it seem like this game deserves a chance. Hmm, there might be something here. Early access, free. 
we're getting a lot of that today like a lot of games that are sh surprisingly free when it really wouldn't make a lot of sense for it to be free Some of this later trailer stuff shows real platforming and, and real enemies. This does kind of look like a Banjo-Kazooie style game. With... A glimpse into the future is only the beginning. Yeah. Not really sure what is going on and honestly I, these suggestions are just getting laughable at this point how in the world do you compare a hat in time and hellblade and say these these games somehow are similar steam desperately needs to fix its issue i guess we could also say the steam's blue interface is still blue but it does i think I think it has gone a couple shades darker um, than what it was before. The, the real trick is if they are slowly changing the color shades on the blue, there's definitely a lot of places where they have not been slowly adjusting the color shades to a darker color. If anything, what they would need to do is they'd need to take these blue texts and make them brighter and just slowly take out the blue and slowly turn it into white uh, because that's really where this should go and seeming seems like they're not willing to go that far Yeah, I suppose if I had a lot of time today, I would do some flawless cleanup also, but I don't think we're going to, and I think I'd rather just have a shorter experience. And as shocking as it sounds, I, I think I'd rather go back and, and just play through Dead Space 3. Um, it's questionable whether I need to play yet another horror game for October, or between the other games I've played I've got enough content um, Hellblade was particularly short so that's where Dead Space 3 is going to air after that one but for the other time slot that is typically more kid friendly although almost never kid friendly in the month of October there, there might be room for another game uh, here we have a game on Steam called Tyron which is already mixed and doesn't look particularly interesting it's an RPG game strategy tactical game five dollars and nine cents English Russian Ukrainian it won't be long now. here we'll we have a game called Horror here. Royale which very generic name to say the least and it looks like it to very generic asset flip visuals just bloody walls everywhere let's see early access for 49 english only here we have a game called selena's nightmare which is tagged as anime action dark fantasy yep this to me looks like a low effort asset flip anime game and see that the problem with this is if even if this was a game made in earnest just using one of these basic anime characters which have been used and abused as for low asset flip games on steam makes your game have that negative connotation to it um this is 7.99 english portuguese brazil um so they have created this scenario so sweet, the low effort asset flip game developers have created this scenario where they have 
tainted those visuals completely. Which is probably fine because those visuals never looked good in the first place and never really was catching anybody's attention. Here we have a game on Steam called Only Me. Apparently you're the last man on the ship in this Chinese kind of System Shock style game. That is one of the problems I would also say people need to keep in mind is if the System Shock reboot comes out and gets made there may not be enough oxygen in the room for um, the, for a Dead Space reboot. There may not be enough oxygen in the room even if System Shock doesn't come out for a Dead Space reboot because you already have the Prey series coming out and succeeding in that same field as far as a set in space kind of horror action game. Um, the, you have Dishonored, which is sort of in that space, but not so much. You have the Resident Evil series, uh, succeeding and rebooting itself. So that, that too is going to take a lot of the oxygen out of the room, uh, for that style of game. Well, this ain't ideal, is it? Blessed is the promised day. My boats are too fast to see. see. I'll fry you to crisp. This world is filled with mystery. Yeah, only me as a game does not look interesting. Here we have a game on Steam called Claire de Moon. Story driven puzzle adventure set in the grounded science fiction universe. Get used to this rain. And see what the first thing you see here about this trailer that you pretty much don't see with any other trailer is that the character is just sitting across from you at the table and talking to you. Um, and you're seeing a real human actually emoting and, and being animated. Hmm. So. And that, that pretty much looks to me like that is the intro cutscene and it's not what the actual game is the actual game seems to be more of an open world environment with enemies and portal like technologies portal gun like technologies and certainly that takes you in a different direction um because none of the portal games had enemies that could just attack you like that giant spider um none of them were set in a open world or more open world organic environment portal 2 tried to be somewhat uh destroyed environments but that was about it yeah this looks like portal on a whole new concept hmm. Seems like we, at some point, actually get a gun. And when you actually get a gun, you can actually shoot things. Which, that also solves a problem. That, that has kind of haunted the Portal series. Is that they can't really make a... Um, hmm can't really make a a game where you can shoot guns so yeah this this looks very interesting the only thing that would scare me away is if this tactic studios has worked on something else that just looks like total garbage and no they worked on a game called immortal empire from 2015 which is a very different looking game but it is mostly positive so they're stepping up their efforts and going in a different direction seems like you play as the father of this girl um claire the loon says you play as john a smuggler on the run all right well i was definitely not expecting to be hyped about any games anytime soon um of course, I may get hyped about this game. It may never come out, so I'm not going to be too too hyped. But it is also nice to 
see that my massive effort of looking at every single game that comes out on Steam as much as I can sometimes pays off with a rare gem a hidden gem as it were and more than likely from my new sources Claire de Lune will be talked about at some point when it actually comes out but it is also possible that it's been it's just not going to get any public uh, coverage at all uh, moving on we have a game here that's all in Asian letters seems to be some kind of Chinese life sim game as best as I can tell and working as a food cart salesman it seems like two dollars and 39 cents or some kind of sales cart sales table next we have a game on steam called paladin stream which just looks like an rpg game of no real interest eight dollars and 99 cents english only uh video game chronicles has an article here a sealed copy of mario 64 has become the most expensive video game um this you can see has been sealed and raided for uh, by water for a 9.8 um, uh, 9.8 level of perfection what's funny is I want to trick myself into believing that I might have a Mario 64 box st sealed in box in in my garage right now I want to trick myself and believe that's true. Um, I severely doubted his because I didn't keep any of the games I had in box. I played them. So it's kind of a pretty bad um, thing. Even if that was the case, it's probably being having been in a garage for for like over a decade. It's probably nowhere close to to being rated a 9.8 A++. Uh, condition and clearly we see the speculation market it has just gone insane hmm. did it actually sell for that hmm. yeah it did sell for 1.56 million yeah excess. yeah Speculation on video games has clearly gone crazy. I could certainly do a lot with 1.56 million dollars. Um, actually, I probably wouldn't do that much with 1.56 million dollars. I would pay off a mortgage and just coast. I would just be happy to live in confidence that I could put that money in a very stable roth ira or um or at least a significant amount of it in the roth ira um or and keep a significant amount in savings um i could go on a bit of a shopping spree certainly and manage this and buy um a few things but i honestly don't have probably even fifty thousand dollars worth of things i'd want to buy just off the top of my ha head um, pinball machines you could go crazy and do that um, and yeah, spend a couple thousand on that maybe get that new truck with the that is electric that that's something that I wouldn't mind having um, Maybe buy off some other houses. Buy, buy a second house or two. You get really crazy. Um, I have to stop standing in peace. Probably spend a decent amount of money on Lego. We're the best hunters out there. But uh, honestly, probably oh. three or four thousand at most on Lego would be more than a lifetime supply for of extra Lego. Hmm. 
definitely some computer stuff I could buy. And if I was to go any crazier with with just mad cash, if somehow I had $1.56 million, if I was just to follow this fantasy to its logical conclusion, the, the next step would be to potentially buy a like restaurant or something, something that could be a more permanent source of income. Um, but that at a certain point that is incredibly risky and it's basically buying a job for you and I, I don't see a real reason why I'd want to if if I got a big windfall why I would want to buy myself a job that I would then have to work at um, it's the exact opposite of the reason why you would want to don't own a restaurant, bar, or uh, whatever, um, or business. You know, it would be much more logical to just take it easy and retire, and, and maybe slow down a little bit on the the content I make, but I, probably not even that much, uh, as far as the the YouTube channel. Uh, moving on, we have a game on Steam here called Cabin Fever, which seems to be a visual novel, which says you're an, it's an off-grid cavern. Um, seems like the world may have ended, and it seems like you end up with this anime girl at this off-grid cavern. Dating Sim Romance Game, $8.99. English full audio. Interesting. No other language. Eh? Um, there's always something funny about these fantasy fulfillment stories where you have to bend over so backwards to even uh, think that you might end up with a girl by basically having an apocalypse and being trapped with them and stranded with them in a cabin. Uh, it also just really implies that um, that that this flawed thinking pattern that if you were just stranded on the desert island, which is what this fantasy really is, with a female, that the female would eventually just fall in love with you. Um, they would see that you're a good guy and that that. Um, they have no other options. Whereas the if I was stranded on a desert island with a, with a woman, with a female that hated me, nobody ever really considers. Yeah, they may just murder you, or they may never fall in love with you. They may always hate you and begrudgingly work with you at most, uh, or they may straight up just kill themselves, being trapped on this island that they with with this person they don't desire um, or for any other reason <clears throat> and then inherently the anime girl trope almost always is that very um, submissive uh, fantasy character that exists maybe in Japan but often doesn't exist anywhere else and I don't know if it really exists even in Japan um, as much as people think but yeah as a story as a fantasy I'll put it on the fall list and see what people have to say uh, let's see next we have a game on Steam called Everlasting Guilt which is a first-person shooter game with swords and magic which seems like it's 
makes it all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, the visuals don't look bad, but they don't look consistent, certainly. And I'm not saying you can't have a universe where there are guns and magic and, and all of that exist. I'm just saying you have to work very hard to make that exist and feel like a consistent universe. And that's not really what I'm seeing here. Uh, this just feels asset flippy. Seems like you just have these different arenas and in each arena there are different monsters that attack you. Early access 1049 English, Japanese, and Chinese. Take only Play what this. Is uh, let's see. Next we have a game on Steam called Kinsai, which Looks like it's some kind of RPG game. Doesn't look particularly interesting. Free, English only. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Team Ninja tweeted out a update is available for their Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. Uh, here it is, Steam version 1.0.0.2 has been released. Adds, they've added now graphic settings to the options in the menu launcher and the resolution and V-Sync settings are now available, which really highlights the fact that Team Ninja didn't put a lot of effort into the, to the PC version of the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection in I think the reviews definitely reflected that. Yep. Team Ninja does really just feel like it is all over the place with the way it does business. Um, and not to the benefit of itself or others. It does just feel oddly like they don't know what they're doing and that they have to lean heavily on assistance from others um, when you look at the PC port of Ni the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection when you look at Hellblade it just seems like there's a lack of skill or a lack of leadership take your pick Gamma Sutra has an article here uh, the Epic Games vs. Apple is back on in Australia as Apple has lost an appeal. Now, I don't know how Australian law works, but um, it was always... If, it, if you were talking American law, you, you very rarely win or lose on appeals and decisions and motions. You, you win or lose on judgments which is the final say in the final judgment of uh, a jury or a judge um, instead of making a paper motion to the judge to dismiss, which those paper motions do happen, but they, they tend not to, to win you the entire case. Um, so I, I would assume Australia law is the same. And I would assume that this Apple appeal that they made was an appeal to dismiss and it was rejected as most appeals to dismiss are. Um, like you, you really have to fail in your pleadings and your paperwork to, to get something dismissed on appeal. You have to really just rant or not really state a claim or do something else just completely outside of what the court can can entertain we haven't heard anything from the epic games versus apple lawsuit in america and i imagine all of that will just take forever here we have a game on Steam called Death Upon Us. 
which looks like an asset flip first person shooter. It's $9. English allegedly full audio with a bunch of other languages. Uh, Games Radar has an article here. Death Door somehow makes death feel both bleak and supremely chill. Which, why is this? Cycles on. You are done for. Into panting position. We won't give him an inch. We can. Like the moon on the water's surface. Center that at the very least. We're gonna never see games radar. I don't know why I had a games radar page anyway, so. Hmm. So you can get about that far, and I guess that works. Hmm. Yeah, this game, Death Door, looks slightly interesting. It'll be released on July 20th. Mm. Alright, let's try Dragon... Nope, that was Swordcraft. Dragoncraft what we, is what we're looking for. Which I guess is this one, yeah. Um, Unreal Engine uh, has a developer no, day schedule for GDC 2021. The They'll be showing off the more demos, this Alpha Point technical demo captured on Xbox Series X. They'll be talking about their MetaHuman um, engine or code that makes random NPCs look more interesting or it lets you create with a randomized base model character and turn that into a more interesting um, person. Here, they'll be showing off more demos for Unreal Engine 5 as far as information that, that they have to offer. Hmm. If you are a game developer, that going to GDC and listening to presentations from Unreal Engine Epic Company makes a lot of sense. Certainly I can see the beginning of the end too. So maybe we will do some follow list cleanup today. Uh, Gimetsu has Cruising Blast for Switch lost, launching September 14th. Um, I'll be interested to see how well this is received as a game and if they can really revitalize the cruising series it looks to me like there's eight eight areas no maybe 16 areas seems like you kind of go all over the place no nope, more than 16 24 areas Secret keys and cash as a collectible. The graphics here don't look particularly great, but maybe that is just the trick that people can now pull off with the Switch is that they don't have to make games that look that good because of the fact. This definitely feels like um, a different experience than what the original cruising game was. But, yeah. Doesn't look bad. Uh, particularly when you consider your only other option really would be something like... Um, something like a Mario Kart game. And if you've played all of Mario Kart, that's it. 
Um, the YouTube, short, YouTube Shorts concept is now available in 100 countries. What's funny is the YouTube Shorts, which is just stealing ideas from Instagram, basically, um, is out right now on top of the YouTube Clips concept. So it's like there's two short form media offerings and uh, no, I was, it's not YouTube Shorts and YouTube Clips. It's YouTube Shorts and YouTube Stories that is out right now. Where stories are the like pictures that can be kind of animated GIFs, I think, at most, but they're not videos. In a lot of ways, YouTube is trying to steal the concepts and the things that worked well um, from Instagram and Twitter and giving it only to specific uh, people instead of everybody um, in a weird way they're kind of also bringing back Google uh, Google Plus Google Circles uh, without really bringing back Google Circles. They're bringing back those concepts. I've seen like one YouTuber use the YouTube Shorts. Um, or the... Well, you use it a lot and then pretty much I haven't seen any other YouTuber use it at all. Um, and it doesn't seem like it really works. And even that one YouTuber most recently put out three YouTube shorts in a row. And it's like, this is part one, this is part two, this is part three. And that really feels like that violates the whole idea of what it was supposed to be in the first place. <laughs> what a wonderfully cruel world. There's a lot more where that came from. Um, Despair or slay, don't take this personal. So yeah, I really don't know where stories or shorts are going to end up. More than likely what's going to happen is it's just going to be abandoned like so many other concepts that YouTube and Google have done. And they really haven't found a natural footing in, in the flow. Uh, I've been watching way too much YouTube in the past few days, and and between that and sleeping a ton, I, I really haven't gotten anywhere as much stuff done as I would have liked. And maybe that's just the lazy days of summer, but every year that seems to affect me more. Um, Yeah, I am certainly not not really accomplishing a lot with these new YouTube things, taking up more time than they should. Designs are like unhatched dragon eggs. <laughs> Hmm. Don't take this personal. Have you calmed down? Uh, moving on. Uh, G Gamma Sutra has an article here. Summer games done quick online. Raised 2.8 million dollars for Doctors Without Borders, I believe. Um, and I'll provide it. Well, that's too bad. Let's see. For period. So they wrote this article, they didn't even know who, who it was for. They didn't even... Gamma Sutra didn't even check it. Which is funny because I really haven't noticed Gamma Sutra make such terrible like mistakes as far as its writing uh, before this point. Um, yeah, and that, that's not like a temporary thing. That's been messed up for a while. Um, 
that being said, a lot of the doctors uh, without a lot of the Gamma Sutra articles I don't read anyways. So it is possible that it has been full of typos this whole time. And I just haven't caught it up until this point. And I keep yawning. Yeah, I'm. I definitely am sleepy. Victory is exhilarating. And so, yeah, I think what we'll do today is we need one Runecraft and Bloodcraft victory. If we play that and finish that, uh, then we'll just get through the rest of the news uh, as far as games left over from Friday. If we get through all the games left over from Friday, then I will do some followless cleanup, but the followless cleanup will stop as soon as we get one victory or I get too tired, whichever happens first. So here we have a game on Steam called Cyber Defense 2088, which looks like it's some kind of VR game of no real quality. Early access, $17.99. Here we have a game called Undercover Agent. It's not tagged as having adult content, but certainly you have a very big boobed anime lady here. Uh, otherwise, it looks like it's some kind of maybe RPG dungeon crawler game. Let's see, it's 719 English, Japanese, and Chinese. Japanese full audio. That one's not making it to the fall list. Here we have a game on Steam called Helix, which is a top-down twin-stick shooter yeah, with dark screenshot syndrome. $7.99. Here we have a game called Home Creator, which while I wouldn't really want a video game around the idea of creating a home, I would, wouldn't mind a software game around creating a home but at a certain point this is just an asset flip game and you're going to be severely limited even things like the sims are severely limited as far as styles and what what really you should do is i think there's an ikea software out there or website out there where you can create an entire building room full of ikea items and then it gives you a shopping list of those ikea items to buy to actually decorate your room with and that's where this concept makes a lot of sense is when you have that tie-in to real world furniture that you can actually get then there's some real value in decorating digitally and then making a shopping list that you could either buy immediately or slowly over time use to um, what is not there. to decorate the house the way you want it to be decorated it is the same issue with the pc repair simulator game is that that game only really makes sense when it has a wide collection of different pc components and it's not quite to that point yet. It has some PC components, certainly, but not enough where you could buy, say, gigabyte components if you wanted gigabyte components. It really is just kind of ASUS components, I think, that they that they support. And and until you get computer case dimensions, which that is where it really starts to to become the issue is you, you're still in a weird difficult position um take only what is necessary scatter like the block yeah for the end is me you've been chosen unbelievable you still would, I suppose, be way better off just looking at the dimensions of PC components. 
Most things are very standardized as far as size. It's, it's not until you start getting into cramming as much as you can into a computer case or putting in radiators and water cooling. Um, speaking of water cooling, I, I've never really felt like water cooling was safe. Uh, but there, the Linus Tech Tips showed off a new device that would go on top of a a water reservoir that does a negative pressure seal um, system so if you were to have a leak it starts sucking in the oxygen uh, su sucking out the air in the reservoir to make a pressure to stop it from leaking and it sets off an alarm and with that kind of like permanent monitoring going on on a liquid cool system at that point it, it does feel more reasonable to, to want to try and have a water cooled system that being said there's still a problem that I personally would have with a water cooled system in the the radiators the heat pumps and the fans on the radiators very often make more noise than just having a regular cpu fan well on a computer unless you're just overclocking like crazy and if you're trying to stream adding more noise into the room is not effective or useful um and overclocking like crazy is not recommended in my opinion as far as being a streamer I think you're much better off simply having your game yeah I think you're much better off just having either better equipment to start with or not bothering to uh, or, or lowering your resolution down for streaming anyways man I feel like I'm just rambling at this point I, I had to listen to one of my videos where I paused Dead Space 3 20 minutes into a recording and then I fell asleep and I came back like five hours later <laughs> And I'm like, oh man, I don't know if you can pause a video on OBS for five hours and it, it still work. Turns out it did work, which I was happily surprised with, but I did want to go back and make sure that there wasn't any kind of sync issue or any weirdness that might happen um, because of that. And in that effort I heard myself talking and I was I was just like yeah th this is not good I'm just gonna saying um and all which I, I constantly am doing that I've really never figured out a way to to just take that breath and and stop doing it I do it sometimes but I'm not anywhere good at it What's funny is, I need that second dinner collectible card game, the Marvel card game, to come out before I hit like the max level of 250 with all these characters. Because if these characters are at the max level and I'm I'm losing half the time, I will not be making any progress at all when I lose, and that that'll suck. Although. At that level, it really wouldn't matter either. Regardless, moving on. We have a game on Steam here called Nina Aquila Le Legal Eagle Season 1. Which seems to me like it's some kind of RPG game. But it also kind of feels like it's some kind of joke lawyer game. Hmm. Apparently it was a chart topping itch.io game. $7.64. 
third party Eula English full audio. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's a clone of the that lawyer game. I'm gonna put this on the follow list to give it a chance, but I I seriously doubt I'd be interested in playing it. I can't even remember the name of the lawyer game I'm thinking about. Ace Attorney, I think is the name of it, yeah. Here we have a game on Steam called Homebound, which I can dismiss way easier. $9.99 English only. Here we have a game called Functional, which looks like it's a text-based game. So I have no real interest in it. Puzzle game about math and abstraction. $6.29 English only. Here we have a game called Art Puzzle VR, which are you doing just block puzzles at that point? Because it feel like it very weird to do jigsaw puzzles. Hmm. So does each cube here have a different face or does each cube have the same face in the same orientation? It would definitely be a lot more difficult to do a puzzle if the cubes had different faces and only one was right. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yep, this seems like this is way too simplistic a puzzle game. $8.99 English only. Also, this is one of those examples where being in VR absolutely does not help or change anything in a positive way. You must make the um, first move. It, it would make way more sense to just be playing a flat 2D puzzle ver puzzle game or be in the real world just doing a puzzle in reality. Here we have a game on Steam called Soul Path The Final Journey, which is um, interesting because I don't think there's anything else called Soul Path that I've ever heard of. Looks like a VR game where you're jumping around through a bunch of asset flip uh, environments and looking at asset flip items. That's pretty much, I think, all it actually is. $8.99 English, Spain, Spanish. Let's see if there was anything else called Soul Path. Nope, we have an Aliens Attack before that. And we have Danger Room VR. And there's really not a lot of relevancy on any of the previous games. Although one did get 65 reviews. I have no interest in putting that in the fall list. Here we have a game called Swords of Legend Online, which is probably a Chinese MMORPG game. There, the video, the images aren't loading. Yeah, I'm still tweaking my QoS settings, but I think I pretty much got it. I haven't had any weird disconnects uh, this week, but in all fairness, because I was working on the network attached storage Samba server issue, I was rebooting the router pretty much every three or four hours anyway, so uh, that might be the reason why I haven't had any weird issues. Um, and I was able to put a lot more of the kind of precision controls um, into my QoS things. Of course, if I'm going to use SSH and SCP to back up, right now my Q quality of service settings say to make that maximum, give that the fast track path. Um, because if you need the SSH into the router, that you need to be able to get access above all else because that's considered an emergency like communication in my mind uh it's not so much an emergency communication when you're just backing up hardware that i would want to put to the slowest path the bulk start level of information um which i'm debatable about that one anyways because if it takes five days for a backup to happen every month then that's kind of ridiculous also um where it 
it shouldn't really take that long. So, yeah, I'll, I'll have to reevaluate whether I can use QoS to specifically look for SCP, which you probably can't because it's encrypted into the SSH uh, traffic. Um, I envy you. So you probably can't give that a different quality of service label. But otherwise, it seems like it's working fine. Interesting, I got a challenge to get... My play is passage into the afterlife. Hmm. Uh, we have a game on Steam here called Color Breakers, which looks like it's just a player versus player game. Doesn't really interest me. Even if it did, it's player versus player, so I couldn't play it. $11.99, bunch of languages. Doesn't look terrible, doesn't look great. Hmm. So, now that we have done everything, the only thing I could think about possibly doing would be going over to the arena and thinking about doing like a open six challenge with the new expansion, um, which I probably should think about doing that on Wednesday, but that's definitely not something I'm going to do when I start late on a Monday and I'm sleeping and, and just not really motivated. Um, we did make some process progress with the battle pass, but the last battle pass we did, we really hadn't even made it to anywhere near the end by the time the season ended and we're on the fourth season already. These happen far too quickly. So, yeah, I still have zero reason to really want to buy a battle pass. And then we are both just waiting a couple of days here to probably tomorrow we'll get the reward for this and the reward for this. And we mostly got everything. We just missed that first day. Hmm. Here we have a game on Steam called Player City, which looks just like an asset flip game of no interest. $8.99 English, Portuguese, Brazil for audio on Portuguese, Brazil. Hmm. These environments look asset flipped. This character looks just ridiculous. Hmm. Here we have a game called Puppet Netic Speedrun Challenge, which I don't even know what this is supposed to be. I cannot visually make it out. Seems like you're some small kind of puppet jumping around a lot of different environments. Like I Am Toast, kind similar type of game. Eight dollars and thirty-nine cents. Yeah, I'm not interested in it. Here we have the Cat of Monte Cristo instead of the Count of Monte Cristo, which is an RPG Maker game for seventy-nine cents, English only. Here we have a game called Castles and Catapults, which looks like nothing of interest for seven ninety-nine. Here we have Alice's Jigsaw Time Travel 2, which just looks like a jigsaw puzzle game. $2.99, bunch of languages. And see, what's weird about this one is it kind of looks like some of these are hand-drawn, but some of these just look like photos. And that'd be very weird if you were the model or if you're the daughter of a programmer and they made a game based on you and 10 years down the line there's a game still sit out there being sold with this picture of you for, that's 10 years out of date here we have a game called totally baseball which looks like it's a vr baseball game slightly not as visually polished as some of the other baseball games we've seen
full sport of baseball and virtual reality is an interesting concept, though it's not something we've seen before. Fourteen ninety nine single player. Let's see, real throwing and catching, real batting, amazing physics. Um, multiple locomation options. I want to put this on the fall list because I, I just really want to see if this really works. I get the idea of being able to um, swing the bat. But the running, the sliding, the pitching, all of that takes a little bit more effort to program. Here we have yet another aim trainer, 3D aim trainer, this time on Steam. I don't know why any of these are available on Steam. English, it is free, but early access also. No to that. Here we have a game that's all in Asian letters. Looks like it's probably a Chinese game of some sort. $4.24 Chinese only. Guess it's probably an RPG. Here we have a game called Star Vortex, which looks like maybe it's an Asteroids game. Um, sort of. No, not really Asteroids as much as you're sucking in Stardust for some reason. Like some kind of mouse game. I have no interest. Here we have a DHEX TD game, which is clearly just a tower defense game on a hex grid. $4.49 English only. No interest in that. Here we have a game called Puzzler, which is just a jigsaw puzzle game. Free to play. Single player online. English only. Well, the price is right, but it still doesn't look like a quality, pro, uh, quality puzzle game. Here we have a game called Boomerang X, which is tagged as an arena shooter, fast paced, stylized ninja game. Hmm. $19.99, a bunch of languages, single play. Published by Devolver Digital. So there might well be an actual game here. But maybe not. May, it may just be 20 minutes of gameplay and then you get bored of it by that point. But I'll give it a follow up since it's already rated very positive and think about it some more. By, by this metric it should already be on my wish list, but I want to think about it a little bit more. Here we have a Sniper Elite VR. Unfortunately, it seems like half of these Rebellion Sniper Elite games are bad. This seems to be mixed. $29.99. Bunch of languages. English full audio. Here we have a game called AD2047. Which... Yeah, it doesn't doesn't have good reviews but it looks slightly interesting the VR interactive game for $13.99 English Japanese and Chinese I suspect what the case here is that it's got some interesting like visuals and cutscenes but then all you do is just look around and not actually really interact with it it's tagged as being cinematic which is almost a bad thing here we have a game called Nemesis, spelled Z-I-S, Mystery Journey 3, which is mostly positive and already on my fall list. $17.99, English full audio. Um, I guess the real question here was Nemesis 1 and 2. Ah, this very much does feel like a missed game with actual people around Let's see maybe that's why it was on my fall list nemesis 2 apparently not 
by the same developer. Hmm. Do they have a Nemesis 2? I don't think they do. Hmm. Alright, well. Let's see. If I zoom the image bigger. I should be able to search for Nemesis. No. There's just this Fantasy Grounds DLC, Nemesis Savage Worlds. So I wonder if I wonder if this, this, maybe it's Mistress Journey. That might be it. So if we go, Mysterious Journey. Is there a Mysterious Journey one and two? There's the Antlier. Mysterious journey, but yeah, I'm not seeing anything else labeled mysterious journey either. Hmm. It's they're saying it's a play SA franchise. Adventure game. But we looked at every game here. On the list. Under new releases. Under adventure. It's just not there. Why would you name your game three and then not have one or two? I guess that explains why this is just on the fall list, though. Like, it's kind of hard to justify um, having the third game or playing the third game in a series when... The first two games are not on Steam. Uh, moving on, we have a game on Steam here with all just Asian characters. Which just looks like a horror asset flip game. 59 cents, Chinese only language. Here we have a game called Inside the Line, which is just a coloring game. Which doesn't look like it has any real quality to it. Four dollars and ninety-nine cents, English only. Here we have a game called Friend Request Playable Teaser, which doesn't look like anything of interest. It's free. Here we have a game called Airtight City, 1.0. Looks like it might be a Chinese horror game, or might actually be something of interest there's a little too dark screenshot syndrome happening right now hmm. Hmm. not sure that there's really a game here or if this is just five minutes of gameplay or tech demo english and chinese 99 cents I'll put it on the follow list, but yeah, I'm not sure there's a full experience there. Here we have a game just called Fear Background, which feels like it's supposed to be um, 
in the fear first person shooting series but no it isn't it's just a horror game with a bad generic name which in all fairness the fear uh, first person shooting game also was generic as a name also so yeah that's not interesting here we have a game called combat combats which doesn't look like anything polygon first person shooter probably player versus player free to play with $30 worth of DLC really here we have a game called urban fight which looks like nothing of interest $1.21 English Chinese and Japanese hmm. Some guy, it's tagged as cyberpunk. Yeah. I don't think there's really a game here. All the visuals do look good. The screenshots don't. Moving on, here we have another one of these Shakespeare visual novel joke games. Shakespeare question mark, more like thirst sphere, am I right? Um, honestly, this is probably a not even in the vein of the other Shakespeare visual novel games that um, people have been making. Because this seems like more of a troll joke game. Nope, it is the same people though. Interesting. Well, this game is four ninety nine English only, and yeah, I never really felt like any of the the Shakespeare as a dating sim visual novel game made any sense. Here we have a game called Golden Jar Fall, which is a little dark screenshot syndrome, top down dungeon crawler. Uh, early access 499 English Spain Spanish I'll give it a follow but it doesn't really deserve it with these visuals here we have a game called Forgotten Journey from DigiPen so this is a student project and it looks really good nice it'll be free English Spain Spanish that's interesting that they support Spanish now I don't actually need to put it on the follow list. I can just put it on the wish list. Um, of course, this will be a really short experience. Uh, regardless. Here we have a game called Crash Drive 3. Hmm. This doesn't look too bad. Right? Nowadays, I'm pretty much in the mindset of just dismissing any racing game. I see. But yeah, this does not look terrible. And that cruising game, in comparison, probably is not coming to PC, so you, you have to take what you're offered. $14.99, whole bunch of languages. Yeah, I'll put that on the follow list. For about five more tabs. Here we have Toho 3D Dungeon, yet another Toho game. It doesn't look interesting. $7.91 English, Chinese, Japanese. Here we have a game called Turbo Tempest, which looks like it's a water-based racing game. There's not enough content visually here to interest me. It's, it's a little too generic and repeated. Free to play, English only. Here we have a game called Attic, which looks like it's a pixely point and click game. English not supported, $1.99, Russian only. And then we have Monster Hunter Stories Wings of Ruin, which is mostly positive. Which 
I think at this point there's no argument against putting this on the wish list. Like the only argument I could ever make would be I'm I'm just not gonna play Monster Hunter games at all and or I only want to play Monster Hunter World and not the Monster Hunter Stories games, which these definitely look more like a Zelda game the more and more I look at him. Um, which I guess that really does make an argument that if I played the Monster Hunter Stories um, games, I very possibly have as good, if not better, a story experience than playing Breath of the Wild, and I can actually stream it on my YouTube channel. Like, that, that is a tall order, certainly, to actually believe that, but that very well might be the case. Um, the thing I guess I would want to ask here, looking at this trial, which is the last tab I have, is I don't want the trial version. But I would like to know, can I play Monster Hunter Stories 1? Or am I doomed to play Monster Hunter Stories um, 2 and not uh, 1? There isn't seemingly a collection here of Monster Hunter Stories games. Seems like it's mostly just Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Yeah. So unless Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter Stories 1 was released quite a long time ago. There's a decent number of Capcom games also that are on my wish list. Which I guess this highlights that Capcom games just kind of never go on sale. Although I do have some games here that I definitely haven't played. Yeah, you're getting back to games as in the 2013s at this level. So it is highly unbelievable. This game, Lost Planet Colonies. Uh, the Lost Planet series, I think they stole some ideas. Um, I think Dead Space 3 stole some ideas from the Lost Planet series. And I was trying to remember the name of it. Certainly because Lost Planet is a alien world on a snowy planet. And you end up on an alien snow planet, I think. In Dead Space 3, I think that's where we're going to end up. So yeah, that does put me in a weird position. Seems like, at least on Steam, there is not a Monster Hunter Stories 1. So, that makes an hard argument to play it. Hmm. Alright, well then that covers all the news, and I've been yawning, so there's no good reason to try and do a faultless cleanup. We, d we got all the... Um, um, we got all the daily quests done on Shadowverse, so that's all I really needed to do, so I'm going to scroll down my Twitter feed and look if there's any new news. Hmm. And once I confirm that there really isn't any new news, I will end the stream. And it seems like there isn't going to be any new news. Because it's only been a couple hours and it was already past the evening point when we started streaming, which does create that situation where new news tends not to break. Yep. So, that's going to be it for this stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, 
comment and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and get me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.